Greetings, Moto Spirit viewers. I'm uh, here to talk a little bit about my history with uh, motorcycling. And uh, so I'd like to introduce myself. I'm John Lammers, also known as Dutch in this industry. And uh, my motorcycle story started when I was 22 years old. Um, I grew up in my late teens. Uh, I was interested in fast cars and motorcycles were not really on the radar for me until my friend John Vanderperk bought a uh, brand new BMW in 1974. Uh, you know, I need to get myself a motorcycle. I, I was under the impression that you worked your way up to a BMW, you didn't start there. So I was uh, looking uh, to buy something smaller and uh, maybe a different brand. But uh, every time I'd uh, check one out, I'd, I'd run it by John first to see what he thought about it. And a uh, uh, long story short is he thought that I should have a BMW. So he put me together with a gentleman who had a 1971 for sale. and. So I bought that in, I, I think it was 1976. Um, I was about five years old at the time, the, the motorcycle. It had 7,000 miles on it, and I, uh, I got a real passion uh, for motorcycling at that point. And I rode that motorcycle uh, extensively for about 10 years. And at that point, uh, uh, life got a little bit busy. Uh, I think that's a, a story a lot of people can relate to. And uh, I was running a, a business, and had a farm on the side and with five children there was no time for riding so that bike sat idle for about 18 years uh, at which time my life changed a little and I had an opportunity to get back on that bike and I uh, started uh, doing a lot of riding again at that time and I was enjoying my 71 uh, took it out to the west coast and and back to the east coast and, and thought that uh, I should get something a little more modern so I uh, found a 1977 that I thought I should have and uh, and that kind of started it. So for 30 years, I was a one motorcycle man, and and why it turned out to be BMW is, uh, like I said, is because of uh, uh, somebody leading me that way. And uh, so I've been very comfortable with BMW ever since. So um, yeah, so since the early uh, 2000s, I've uh, started to, uh, you know, just uh, chase them down. I, I love fixing them. I've always worked on them. I've always done my own maintenance. Uh, there, why is there no other marks no other brands in this place and it's not because I don't like them. I, I, I love motorcycles, uh, it's just uh, my comfort factor with them and even though they're pretty well all the same in terms of uh, design, horizontally opposed, air-cooled twins, there's just little nuances and differences about them that are uh, kind of make it fun to to find them and, and, uh, and collect them. So I have uh, started to do my own um, restoration a number of years back and uh, so I share this passion with my wife Kate. We uh, we love the BMW stories. We love uh, the hunt to find them, and and we love bringing them home. And so we thought we should rescue every uh, orphaned airhead out there. And as you can see, maybe in the background, we uh, we we were able to find them a lot quicker than I was able to uh, to restore them and uh, and move them on to new homes. But we have been very fortunate to uh, be able to put some classic motorcycles into uh, other people's hands and have them and enjoy them as well. So uh, yeah, as much as we do like, uh, we so much enjoy riding in particular. And uh, so we've uh, had the opportunity to travel this continent uh, over back and forth a number of times and, and have uh, made so many really good relationships. Uh, motorcycling is a, is a family and we've uh, ex extended our family greatly by being able to uh, uh, visit places and, and meet people on, on motorcycles that we never would have in a, in a four-wheel vehicle, I'm sure, you know. It was kind of funny because uh, a number of years back we planned a trip to Alaska and as we were uh, making plans, uh, people would say, are you driving? And we'd say, no, we're riding our motorcycles. Uh, you're going to ride a motorcycle all the way to Alaska? And I thought it was kind of a strange question for me because I thought to myself, I would never think about getting in a car and driving all the way to Alaska. But on a motorcycle, it made sense to me. Uh, so I had a lot of people uh, shake their heads, but I, I'm sure there's people who, who can uh, relate to that. You know, a, a trip on a motorcycle is, is not a chore and it's not a, a you know, a, it's not a, a problem with long distance or anything because every day is, uh, is an adventure. And uh, so we, we love that about it. We are part of a local motorcycle club, uh, the Niagara BMW Riders, which is not solely 
for BMW owners. Uh, it's a, a very, what I call a, yeah, loose club. It's, uh, we're not about a lot of, um, you know, organized events. We do a breakfast once a month and get together that way. We meet up places, uh, a lot of times, rallies or for a coffee stop somewhere. And we have a, a barbecue once a year. Yeah, so what I found over uh, over my experience with uh, with these bikes is uh, the thing that I found attractive about them is they're so super well engineered. Now, I, people say, don't you have a modern bike to ride? You know, because uh, when you go places, don't you want to be on something modern? Well, no, I've uh, I've never had a passion to get on a modern motorcycle because uh, honestly, when uh, when I ride my 70s or early 80s BMW. I always have a smile on my face, you know, just uh, the way they work, the, you know, the, the balance is great, the simplicity is there, so somebody who's not really, uh, you know, schooled, I've, I wasn't uh, trained as a mechanic, but I feel very comfortable working on them because they're, they're so simply engineered, uh, everything's straightforward, it's easy to get to, and uh, so I would say if somebody uh, wants to get into a classic motorcycle, it, it'd be really worth checking out. There's, uh, you know, parts availability is just fabulous. I mean, and there's so much um, information out there. I mean, nowadays you can go on the uh, computer and, uh, and and get all the really the information you need to keep these things uh, healthy and, and running well. And there's also that that the fraternity, that that family that I spoke of, where uh, people are just very anxious to help one another out. And uh, so, if there's ever an issue, there's uh, there's always a good uh, you know resource of people to. Uh, to help you through these things. So I started off on what I would consider pretty well the perfect bike for me. It was a 750cc, ample power, uh, not too big, and uh, and so I was like comfortable right away uh, just doing my own maintenance on it. And from that grew uh, into uh, doing, you know, full mechanical uh, and cosmetic restorations. And the cosmetic part of it was kind of a funny story for me because uh, I'd, uh, I'd never painted anything in my life. And uh, I found a, uh, an R90S, um, a Daytona orange one that was all in pieces uh, near Chicago somewhere, and the the, the gentleman had paint, uh, stripped the the paint off the bodywork and taken the bike all apart. And anyway, so it had sat there for many many years, and I picked it up and brought it home. And so I had the bike together mechanically in a matter of a couple of weeks. Uh, I was so anxious to uh, to see this thing finished, but since I hadn't painted anything, and it's a fairly involved. Uh, paint scheme, I researched a, uh, a good painter to do the job for me and uh, this painter, uh, I would take him a large double double timmies every week for a whole year and a half I did that, uh, waiting to see you know what kind of progress he was making on the parts and and nothing ever got done so uh, and it turned out to be a good thing because I, uh, I decided to put myself together a little paint booth here in the shop and and I asked a lot of questions and I had a lot of again good people giving me good information on uh, on how to do it properly, and it, it turned out uh, to be uh, really uh, what I call a beginner's luck. It was uh, it turned out to be s so good, and then from then on, I just uh, uh, painting became really a, a passion for me. I, I love to do the uh, the smoke paint schemes in the, that BMW came out with in the, the 70s and 80s, and uh, so uh, that uh, got added to my uh, to my mechanical restoration uh, skills, and and uh, so. I do pretty well all the, all the aspects of restoration besides pinstriping and uh, upholstery, so, yeah. Yeah, so uh, one of the early stories from when I started riding again uh, in uh, right around 2004, I um, was on my 1977 RS uh, and in, in April I went to a little rally in Mississippi and uh, while I was down there I was wearing my one-piece leather suit and I was in the shop getting, uh, buying a t-shirt and this lady uh, next to me, we got to talking together and her husband was standing over our shoulders and, and he was, I guess, intrigued by my accent. Now imagine that I had the accent down in the south. Okay, so he uh, stepped up to me and he said, where are y'all from? I said, well, I'm from Canada. He says, you rode your motorcycle all the way from Canada? I said, yes, sir, I did. He says, so now what, you're going to just turn around and ride back to Canada? I said, no, sir, I'm going to uh, do some touring around here. I'm going to check out the uh, uh, antebellum homes. I want to, you know, enjoy some of the local cuisine. And, 
and uh, study a little bit of the Civil War history, maybe go down to uh, New Orleans. And, and he said, well, you all got to stop by the house. Well, here's somebody I, I had just met like 30 seconds ago inviting me to his house. So I thought, okay. I said, I'll do it. I headed down the Natchez Trace Parkway to his uh, home in Jackson, Mississippi. And uh, I thought I was going to have a cup of tea there in the afternoon and be on my way. But uh, and here's the family thing, right? So they treated me like their own son. They uh, gave me a room for the night and said, you're not going anywhere. We're taking you on a tour tomorrow. We're going to show you the antebellum homes in uh, Natchez. And, uh, we'll take you to some uh, some museums and anyway, so I, I spent three days with, the, with these beautiful people and, and we developed a, an amazing relationship and to this day, you know, we're so super good friends and uh, and uh, so they were telling me after uh, uh, when I showed up there the story about when we parted from the table, the t-shirt table there, uh, Charlie uh, uh, was escorting his wife back to, the, to their tent and his wife said, uh, Charlie? What did you just do back there? And he said to her, well, I invited that nice young man to the house. And she said, well, you don't even know him. Well, he says, I will when he, once he comes to the house. And she says, well, he could be an ax murderer for all you know. And he said, well, I don't know where he'd carry an ax on a motorcycle. Anyways, his, there, <laughs> his story always was too that, um, you know, when you met people on motorcycles, it was just a, an instant connection and an instant feeling of, um, you know, camaraderie and, and friendship. And he was an, a, the epitome of that for sure. So I always love that story.